Windows. Most of us need it and a lot of videos will point you in the direction of Windows 10. But what happens if your hardware can't run it or you don't really want to? This right here is Windows 2000, or at least the download page for it on windworld.com which is what we're using to download it, as for years now the OS has been regularly taken down and finally thanks to Windworld's efforts of constantly re-uploading it, it's now available to download with plenty of versions available on there. The version we'll be using of course is the retail version with all the service packs installed which saves a lot of time having to update the operating system, which is something we'll definitely touch on later on. But surely we aren't going to be testing this on my main PC, cause I mean this thing runs Windows 10 absolutely fine along with many other new operating systems. Well of course not, we're going to be using something equally as budget so this right here is an MSI motherboard direct from this era, which apparently is Prescott ready. Meaning a code word for being able to double up as a heater given how good Prescott was as an architecture. The motherboard was actually provided by Zach over at the channel Camera, which is the name of the channel so do go check that out. Anyways, in terms of hardware to actually test out, we'll be grabbing a Pentium 4 from a motherboard I left outside ready to go in the bin and don't worry it doesn't work. It clocks in at a measly 2.5GHz and is based on the Northwood architecture and is really underpowered by today's specifications. I also paired this thing with a solid 2GB of DDR RAM which is a decent amount to be using and is so cheap nowadays there's no reason not to be using this stuff if you're stuck on a DDR based platform that does support this amount as I'm going to be essentially living with Windows 2000 for the majority of the week. As for a graphics card we're going to be using a Radeon X800 which is fairly standard so why don't we get this system put together and get around to the real star of the show which is installing and of course using Windows 2000. Unfortunately the motherboard does have a capacitor that controls the PS2 input which unfortunately have died, and with no way of enabling USB support I did end up swapping motherboards as I didn't have any capacitors on hand to try and change this one over and I might save that for another video in the future. Overall it wasn't much of an issue and really does show that old hardware can have its own issues. But in this video we're going to be testing the following areas, we're going to be testing installation ease, general usage, updates available, compatibility and usage then, compatibility with modern hardware, gaming, editing and miscellaneous tasks so we will have everything covered when it comes to Windows 2000 usage. So whereabouts should we start covering these tasks? Well why don't we start with the installation. And Windows 2000 install is essentially the same as Windows XP which isn't exactly renowned for any difficulty whatsoever and is really easy to use. It allows you to install the OS onto a SATA or IDE hard drive natively, something we'll definitely touch on later on. Overall it was a relatively simple process, you can format your drive from within the installer and it will generally just finish itself off when it comes to installing. It's simple and it's effective and is exactly what you'd expect from an older Windows install, yes it is bare bones, but so will most installers from this era so realistically you will be expected to face some sort of challenges when it comes to the installation if you're used to the nice GUIs of say Windows 10 or Windows 7. Just follow the on screen instructions and it doesn't take too long to do. From here I thought it was a matter of general usage and getting the operating system started, so for simplicity's sake it is a very standard Windows setup so there's no need to worry about clicking on express here as unlike new operating systems on <coughs> Windows 10 it actually optimizes some of the best options for you and not what's best for Microsoft. It comes with a great wide range of programs including Internet Explorer 5 which is an issue we'll be dealing with later on. Now the actual OS can get you online with this browser which is important because to actually do anything on Windows 2000 you need to get it updated. So what I've done is given a load of links down in the bottom of the description which allow you to update your Windows 2000 install to give you the best experience imaginable. I'll also link a video by Mr Jake who has an excellent tutorial to follow when it comes to updating the Windows 2000 operating system. The general gist of things is that Windows 2000 needs you to install Internet Explorer 6 along with a few service packs, a load of updates for Windows 2000 direct from Microsoft, followed by some changes to the kernel to allow some more compatibility which is provided by Blackwing Cat, who does a great job keeping Windows 2000 surprisingly up to date given the age of the operating system. 
Anyway, once you're done, you've got all this actually installed, you can enjoy Windows 2000 doing the rest of the work for you via the updating software. As long as you select it to install DirectX 9 and the VCE distributables, you should be absolutely fine. Moving on to compatibility and usage, at first I couldn't figure out why Firefox would keep failing to install, even after using the compatibility launcher, which I really found to be hit or miss with whether or not it really works. It's also included as a download in the description, however, provided you can unzip Firefox instead of installing it like a normal person, even new versions like Firefox 47 will actually work absolutely fine. And that paved the way for a load of compatibility tests, and to no one's surprise, Discord worked absolutely fine and was rather speedy considering we are using very old specifications here. YouTube and the likes will work absolutely fine, but you have to consider that this PC isn't exactly spectacular, so you are limited by the specs here in aspects like these. Even then, this video is about Windows 2000 and so far it's been fully usable as an OS in 2018, but I did find it very weird that a lot of installers won't work so you do end up having to manually install the programs to ensure they actually work. So can we actually download games on Windows 2000 as, let's be honest, that's the reason most of you are actually here and watching this video. Well, unfortunately, Steam can be made to work, and the reason I say unfortunately is that it requires you to own Windows XP, as this makes the process much harder, because if you have access to Windows XP, then you may as well be running that instead of Windows 2000, as that's the point of this video. The idea is that you download Windows XP, download Steam on that, copy over the files back to Windows 2000, change over the original Steam EXE, hope to hell that it actually works, and voila, you should have Steam working, at least for the extra two months that apparently Steam is still going to be supporting the XP variant. And that's all well and good, but realistically Steam will not actually support many games for Windows 2000, and it's not really recommended to go back to 2000 if you have XP installed, so yeah, you sort of see where I'm coming from. However, sites like GOG actually have decent clients, and by decent clients I mean you can actually go to the GOG website and download games that you actually own straight to play on a Windows 2000 system, as long as Windows 2000 actually supports these titles. Something we'll definitely touch on towards the gaming side of the video. Personally, Steam is a no-go, however, offline media and legacy-orientated sites like GOG will work very nicely and can be a valid alternative for older computers. In fact, I prefer to get most of my games on GOG for this exact reason. There's lots of abandoned wear out there, so it opens up your library to a wide range of games that will run perfectly on an OS like this and may not function so nicely on an OS like Windows 10, for example. So we've already established that Windows 2000 seems like near the perfect operating system, at least in terms of one you can download for free, it's got support stability and most things really, but we have yet to test this on older hardware. And by older hardware, I mean old hardware that is still somewhat modern, at least something overkill by Windows 2000 standards. So we have this little setup here, which is definitely as far as I'd be willing to push Windows 2000 with a dual core E5400 CPU and 8800 GT and 4GB of DDR2 RAM. The maximum that Windows 2000 really supports, as it is only a 32-bit operating system and something that many of you may find to be an issue if you want to be running with over 4 gigs of RAM. But realistically, if you are using better hardware than this, or hardware even at this level, you may want to consider using Windows 10 and just de-bloating it completely. But that's not what we're here to see. We're here to see how compatible Windows 2000 is with hardware that you guys will most likely not be using. So why not push it even further with an SSD? You have to keep in mind that I've already tested this PC with an IDE and SATA hard drive, so it's worth keeping in mind that those will work absolutely fine, and an SSD is really just to see how overkill we can make things, with what is by today's standards a fairly ancient operating system. And how well did it work? Well, it worked well, but I did run into one issue, namely the SSD. The SSD loads so quickly that the installer can get a little bit confused and you have to take out the install CD and plug it back in again to stop the first setup from crashing as it gets a little bit confused with the SSD reading quicker than the CD drive is. Then again, that's only a minor issue and otherwise the SSD was lightning fast and it does work alright. Do keep in mind this OS isn't exactly designed for an SSD so you may run into some issues when it comes to actually keeping the SSD maintained. But then again, I'm not too sure why you'd have an SSD but can't afford a system that actually needs to run Windows 2000. But either way, each to their own, you strange, strange, strange people. 
Compatibility did seem to be A1, as any hardware newer than this would really be wasted running Windows 2000. Then AI and I might end up doing a live stream trying to install Windows 2000 on my Ryzen PC sometime, so we'll keep that in mind for the future. Anyway, why don't we discuss if gaming is an option on an OS like this? I download a lot of games straight from GOG, some other sites, and some up by straight up installed from a disc. But anyway, that gives you an idea of what types of media you'll be working with when you're using Windows 2000. So to start things off nice and simply, I thought I'd try OpenTTD, which is free to download and open source. It worked perfectly fine, even on the very low spec PC from earlier on in the video, and was overall a very nice experience. And if you do want to join me playing it sometime, you can go join me on the Keelium 95 server, which is run by 8 megs, and it's definitely worth checking out, so there'll be a link to that in the description as well. Next up, we're moving from the 90s to the early 2000s with Morrowind, which worked well on Windows 2000. In fact, it was designed for an OS like this, and there were no issues at all with the installation, whether I used GOG or a physical disk. Games of this era are perfect for an OS like Windows 2000 and are the sort of games you'd expect to play, especially with period accurate hardware. Keep in mind this worked fine on both the standard system and the completely overkill one, so definitely a go on both of those systems. But to make things a little bit more modern, I thought we'd travel about five years on from this with Oblivion, which is pushing the limits of what was actually designed to run nicely on the Windows 2000 OS. And oddly enough, Oblivion worked fine, so the mid and early 2000s seems to be a great choice for gaming if you do choose Windows 2000, as virtually all games from this era seem to be well supported and will work on even period accurate hardware. But why don't we try pushing things further with a something a tad more modern? Now there's no point expecting me to try the latest and greatest games as we are limited by DirectX 9 support at best regardless of the card we used. But why don't we take things up a step further with the likes of Far Cry 2? Which unfortunately is just ever so slightly too modern to run on a system like this and is really the cutoff era. It's the late mid 2000s where games just started to target a newer code base found on the likes of Windows XP or Vista. You can find a way to get a few of these games running, but ultimately it just isn't worth it. The compatibility launcher works with a few of them, but it wouldn't work with these when I tried regardless of whether I used a disk or GOG install. There seems to be no support for these games and you do have to look on the back and make sure it specifies Windows 2000 if you definitely want to make sure it works. To round us all off, I thought I'd try some Crisis. And no, it didn't work. I installed it on both GOG and it refused to start, so I thought I'd try my disk variant. And once again, it's a no-go. I tried the compatibility launcher, I tried a load of fixes online. There's a few people that claim to have got it working, but I don't think it's actually possible much, at least not today. You could spend an entire lifetime trying to tweak to get it working, but for the average consumer, no, Crisis does not work on Windows 2000. I was also asked to test out some DOS capabilities. Now, unlike the 9x kernel, which is found on Windows 98, this OS is in no way associated with DOS. At least not natively, meaning that your only real option for any DOS gaming on Windows 2000 is to use an emulator like DOSBox, which works okay with acceptable results on even the lower spec machines. I do have to stress though, it is not a native DOS experience, as otherwise you might as well just go ahead and download Windows 98 straight from Winworld, as you have access to a native DOS experience. Although Windows 2000 and DOSBox works okay, if you really want to target DOS games, I'd recommend going down the Windows 98 route, which I may investigate in the future. I will however mention that I did track down an editor for Windows 2000 called Serif Movie Plus 4, and it's essentially very similar to Vegas, and is extremely capable for an editor, especially given the age of the software. But I was not surprised with this, I was more surprised by how rock solid Windows 2000 dealt with it. If any of you guys out there edit, and I'm pretty sure any of you that do edit will know that Windows can be slightly temperamental with some editing tasks. I mean, it's not spectacularly bad, but it's not exactly brilliant. Windows 2000 proved to be a rock solid experience overall. I mean, it didn't crash, and I was pushing the editor to its limits, and I was only messing around for a short amount of time, but still it did impress me. So to round off the video, I thought I'd try a few miscellaneous things. You have access to older versions of Word working absolutely fine. VLC will play all the media files you need it to, and even wireless adapters will work well, provided they're old enough to still have drivers. So that about tops it off with Windows 2000 and my experience with it for the week. I've been using this hardware for quite a while now, and I have to say, it is doing a decent job as well, and it definitely helps with Windows 2000, but even the lower spec Pentium 4 held up okay.
Well, Windows 2000 has proven itself to be a well-supported and stable operating system that works well on virtually all the hardware I tested it. But it was not without its quirks. You need to find older drivers, and some are even listed as only supporting Windows XP and will usually have a legacy fallback mode that does in fact work with Windows 2000, which I had to find with both networking and sound drivers on that newer Gigabyte board. Period accurate things will usually have drivers included on Windows 2000 and work straight from the get-go, but some newer boards will require you to track down those drivers. The OS will install from a USB, but there are issues when it comes to the setup, so it's best to stick to using a CD or DVD based media, which will only take a little while to burn and will be about just as quick when it comes to the real installation, as most of your time will be spent formatting your drive in preparation to actually copy the files. You also do have to take 20 to 30 minutes out of your day to try and download all the updates for Windows 2000. But other than that, if your hardware is older than that of a Core 2 Duo and you can't really run a modern operating system, nor do you fancy downloading and trying to track down a copy of Windows XP, why not grab a copy of Windows 2000? I mean, it's a Windows version so supported that even Linux users I've spoken to end up recommending it. It's a rock solid OS, and even they guarantee that they'd actually use it if they had to use Windows. Personally, I just like the operating system and I found it rock solid to use. But either way, I hope this video has proved helpful. There'll be download links in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. So this video definitely took quite a while to put together and I think I can definitely vouch for the OS now. Don't forget to go check out Zach's channel camera, which we linked in the description, as he did help get some access to extra hardware to test out some of the OS.